Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 9th, 9.30 a.m. If you'd all please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all please still stay uh, standing with like a moment of silence. Uh, last night, uh, Kathy uh, Coran, who's the uh, spouse of uh, Will Coran, used to be our county uh, ESC superintendent, as well as uh, he's our library board member. We uh, had um, suddenly passed, passed away last night. So we'd like a moment of silence. Thank you. And let's start with a prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. I would uh, move to approve the minutes of both the July 1st special commissioners meeting and the July 2nd regular commissioners meeting. All right. And I will second the motion. Any discussion or changes? Roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Hambly? Yes. All right. Open up to public comment regarding any of our pending resolutions. Seeing none, we will proceed. Uh, resolutions. Uh, Jeremy Sinko, you're first on the list today. Morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, two resolutions for consideration today. The first is authorizing the sanitary engineer to obtain an easement for the Medina Road Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project. And the second is a resolution authorizing the sanitary engineer to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund agreement on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners of Medina County, Ohio, for design of Chippewa Lake wastewater facilities and designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan. Move to approve both resolutions. I will second the motion. And uh, in the second one regarding the uh, Chippewa Lake uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrade, we, uh, as <clears throat> you will note, or some might note within our our minutes that we will be holding a public meeting uh, sometime later this summer with the community, uh, with uh, property holders uh, within that area, as well as the local officials, uh, uh, township trustees, and the, the village uh, mm -hmm. officials as well, to discuss the plant future expansion plans there. So, roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Hambly? Yes. We also have, two a commendation uh, commending Bill Jones for his 34 years of service with Medina County, where it has come to the attention of the Board of County Commissioners that Bill Jones has decided to retire from Medina County Sanitary Engineering Department on July 31st, 2024, and whereas Bill is, was hired on July 23rd, 1990, as a wastewater plant operator and transferred to maintenance worker on July 5th, 2005, whereas Bill was both a loyal and devoted treatment plant operator and maintenance worker during his employment at the Sanitary Sanitary Engineers Department. He gave the, his time and dedication to both the profession and his co-workers and always had an abundance of encouragement and positivity for the team. He was very passionate about his work and whereas Bill's many years of service to the county residents is greatly appreciated, whereas the Board of County Commissioners wishes to recognize and honor Bill for his commitment and diligent work during his career with the Sanitary Engineers Department. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Medina County, Ohio, that Bill Jones be and is hereby commended for his 34 years of service with the Medina County Sanitary Engineering Department. Be it further resolved that the Board wishes to take the opportunity to offer best wishes to Bill for his retirement. Move to approve. I was second it. And did you want to make any comments? <laughs> Jeremy, uh, for your uh, point? I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad uh, that uh, Bill is able to uh, uh, you know, make his 34 years here. He's been a great employee for this department and uh, wish him the best. Indeed. Thank you for the service. A roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Hambly. Yes. All right. If you want, Bill, come on up. And if we, Jeremy, do you want to be part of the picture too? We're used to having three people. So I'm just going to Congratulations. This is your chance to say a few words. Like I said, you can. Oh, that's been, I can't believe it. 34 years went by so fast, but uh, I got no complaints. Everybody I ever worked for is real good. And uh, I don't know. I ain't got much more to say other than that. You know? <laughs> but no, everybody, good, good people. Yes. Good people. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for Okay, next, uh, Human Resources Director, Holly Murin. Good 
Good morning. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have four rate increases, two in sanitary, one at county home, one at job and family services, one leave of absence at office for older adults, and one return from leave at county home. Move to approve. Second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Brett Thomas, our finance director. Good, Good morning. morning, Commissioners. Good morning. morning. I have a total of five resolutions for us today. Uh, we're going to start off with print shop revenue for the month um, in the amount of $958.68. Our second resolution is transfers to the Gasoline Rotary Fund in the amount of $22,576.62. Our third resolution is our Vehicle Maintenance Fund, uh, transfers of $55,533.67. Our fourth resolution is Expenses of County Officials. We have a trip for Judge Hudson. Uh, to the Ohio Judicial Conference in Columbus. And finally, our fifth resolution is our weekly bills in the amount of $5,273,768.88. Move to approve the five resolutions. Uh, second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank Very good. Commission. Thank you. All right. And next, Chris Jacob, our county administrator. Morning, Chris. Uh, four resolutions this morning. The first one uh, authorizes the design build process for the construction of a vehicle storage and training facility for the benefit of the Medina County Sheriff's Office. Uh, second resolution authorizes the necessary procurement processes for the Medina County Sheriff's Office radio tower upgrade projects. Uh, this would be a maximum of $400,000 allocated in the revenue replacement ARPA allocation. <clears throat> Third resolution authorizes the Medina County Drug Task Force agency to accept a forfeited vehicle and subsequently dispose of the vehicle. And the fourth and final resolution again for Drug Task Force um, authorizes the trade-in of two used vehicles on a new model vehicle from Luria Chevrolet Buick. Move to approve the four resolutions. I'll uh, second the motion. Any discussion? Hearing uh, none. Oh, oh, sorry, we just uh, just mentioning we we did have the discussion last week with the sheriff regarding the right. the design build. That's just the initial phase of going out for for the quotes. That would authorize the uh, advertisement for the request for qualification process, and then the subsequent request for proposal process, uh, in order to identify a design build company that can bring in this project um, within a budgeted amount. Great. Oh. I guess the, the, to point out that the, the sheriff has uh, acquired a number of grants uh, for the uh, construction of that building. Yep. Yep. Hopeful to see that if the numbers can come in at those numbers, that'd be great. Yeah, let's hope. So. Roll call, please. Harrison? Yes. Um, <laughs> Hambly. Yes. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. All right. We all miss it. Uh, <laughs> department updates. Greg Brown, our county home director. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So starting with our census today, we're at 45 residents. Um, staffing, uh, we're currently um, advertising on Indeed for a PRN LPN and a first shift um, full-time aide. However, with our intermittents that we have currently, all positions are, are being filled at this time. Good. Um, just some updates. Um, with uh, renovations, um, the flooring is now installed in 1A. That's been our renovation project for the end of last year and, and starting to this year. It's done um, along with the, the break room hallway. It was done by inter Interfinish as well. Maintenance is there now, finishing up the ceiling tiles. Uh, they'll reinstall the handrail. And then I'm working with uh, Nate Epic from the Park District to get some pictures of parks that the residents um, go walk in mm -hmm. as decorations for the for the hallway. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other big things for for the county home, um, our website is now accessible through the county website. Oh, we have our own right. tab now. Good. Oh, we're official, <laughs> and that was through proximity marketing. Uh, 
our garden is doing well. We've already had our first crop of yellow squash and zucchini. Mm -hmm. They'll be eating that this week. Uh, some of the donations, uh, we've had uh, the Sharon Women's Club brought some 4th of July pillowcases. We've had flowers in memory of loved ones dropped off, clothing for specific residents, um, a produce from local churches, hymn books from one of our volunteers who sings at the home, Claudia. And then our standard ones, Crop King, with the warm weather and the sunshine, getting lots of hydroponic lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And then uh, also Panera from the Holy Martyrs Food Pantry. One of the other new additions at the home is our, it's new to us, our new transit van, which is replacing our ice cream truck. Mm -hmm. What an upgrade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More space, lifting capabilities, increased seating, it's great. Uh, some of the events that have happened uh, in June and coming up in July, we had the 4-H uh, Pet Pals and the 4-H Petting Zoo. Nate Epic came with his family, mm -hmm. brought the family uh, goat along, <laughs> Holly. Mm -hmm. Access the Arts has been doing what they normally do for us a lot. A uh, concert on the square, which was done here in Medina mm -hmm. this time instead of um, at Sharon Center. Also a craft. Local church did a root beer float, and then we had our summer celebration. That's where we've combined those two. It was all in one, it was done at the home. But this year we, we tried something different. We brought in food trucks. So the Hokulia Shave Ice truck came in for dessert, mm -hmm. and we did JT's um, barbecue uh, truck for the, for the main meal. The Friends of Medina County Home paid for, for the residents to have that. Um, Balloon art and uh, access to the art uh, provided a singer for the event. Excellent time. Pavilion is definitely used a lot during the summer. Great. Uh, trips to local parks um, all this summer. Some of the the three biggest ones besides uh, Buckeye Woods, which is right next door, mm -hmm. Hubbard Valley, River Sticks, and Onslager. I never get that one exactly pronounced correctly. Oh, yeah, Onslager. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, say it quickly. Right, and just, <laughs> just say it quickly. Just. <laughs> uh, picnics on the patio, OOA. We, we always try to get our, okay. our residents over cool. to those. And then Captain Tracy from the Salvation Army has been conducting Bible studies as well. Oh, nice. Uh, one of the last things that we did, we always try to get back. So feeding Medina County, some of our residents and our custodian go over there, box food for a couple hours. In July... The Clutters had their Memorial Day, summer, or excuse me, Christmas in July and Fourth of July party mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. just recently. Excellent, uh, as always. Lots of prizes and, and great snacks and high energy for the residents. Um, Access the Arts will be doing a craft, a bonfire, and then there's a concert at the Sharon Center now. Now that it's open again, and then the Litchfield Band is coming, which that is a tradition spanning many decades. Yeah. So great. great, super. All right, very well, good. That's all I have. Yeah. Well, Are thank you. you. Uh, is the county home open to uh, having the Medina Kiwanis come back out again this year? As they have every for pavilion year, trip? absolutely. I'll have to coordinate that with you as well. I was going to say August is fast approaching. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. Great, thank you. Super. Thanks. All right, Soil and Water Conservation District Manager Eric. Good morning. Good morning. All righty. <clears throat> well, since my last update in April, our office has been on 49 technical events, including 16 drainage visits, uh, five pond permit applications, five stream management visits, six erosion issues, two landowner INEs, 12 pond management visits, three pollinator initiative visits. Education events include our office presenting at Montville's Earth Day celebration at Austin Badger Park. I presented on grazing for OSU's small farm program. Our office was out at Buffalo Creek Retreat for the Earth Day Festival. Uh, our office assisted in the Area 2 Envirothon out at Wayne County. Our annual tree sales pass out was at Geig's Orchard that took place on April 26th and 27th. We distributed 13,630 trees to be planted out uh, in the community. Uh, there was a presentation on gardening for wildlife at the Medina Library on May 9th. 
Also May 9th, our technician taught soil structure to the Sprouts Youth Group. Our native plant sale took place on May 17th and 18th. Our office was able to sell 64 kits that will be planted out in the community. May 21st, our technician was one of the presenters for OSU's Pond School. Uh, the Medina Library, there was a presentation on invasive species management on May 23rd. Our spring fish sale took place on May 31st. We passed out uh, 26,916 fish to people out in the community. Mm -hmm. On June 22nd, our office hosted a composting workshop at the Medina Rec Center. April 22nd, June 1st, and June 2nd, uh, we held presentations regarding our invasive buyback program. The buyback program is a collaboration between the SWCD and the Park District aimed at improving watershed health by encouraging homeowners to remove invasive species from their property. Any Medina County residents can participate by removing a designated invasive plant from their property. Uh, the focus is on calorie pair, but any shrubs or trees on the ODA's website of invasive species uh, can be accepted. The submission deadline is August 30th. All that information and how to participate is on our website. Our new Stream Stewardship Certification Program is currently underway. This program focuses on the health uh, and quality of our streams in Medina County. Five classes have already been held, including a stream cleanup and invasive species poll. The stream cleanup took place in Champion Creek here in Medina City. Our class participants and staff removed 760 pieces of trash from the stream, including bottles, cans, cigarette butts, uh, glass, wrappers, and some construction material. On June 21st, I attended NOACA Business, Community, Rural, and Emerging Leaders Advisory Council meeting. Uh, we, re we received updates regarding NOACA's air quality, uh, public education outreach efforts, their latest Go Ohio commute challenge, and they informed us that NOACA is not in favor of the Boston, Mills, uh, Boston Road interchange on I-71. None of the committees had enough attendees for a quorum, so no voting uh, could happen at that meeting. Our deadline for H2 Ohio VNMP, which is Voluntary Nutrient Management uh, sign up, was June 28th. Uh, we currently have three producers in the H2 Ohio program, totaling 806 acres here in Medina. We have begun work on the VNMP development and continue to receive training from ODA regarding the My Farms platform that the program is running through. The Muskingum Cover Crop Program sign up deadline is tomorrow. Producers in Muskingum Watershed can sign up a maximum of 200 acres and receive $12 per acre for implementing cover crops on their farms. Upcoming events. Our office will be set up at the fair uh, in the Ag Building again. Uh, Monday the 29th, we assist with the hay show judging that takes place at 9 a.m. Our booth this year is on soil health and water infiltration, so be sure to stop out and talk to our board and staff. August 15th, we are uh, partnering with ODNAR and the Medina Parks to host a wildlife workshop out at Letha House Park. August 25th, we are presenting to junior leadership out at our office. We will be using our demonstration gardens uh, to showcase the benefits of native plants and the importance of stormwater infiltration. September 26th. Uh, will be our fall fish sale, so keep an eye out for our newsletters, which will have our order forms, uh, and it will also be on our website as the date gets closer. September 27th, our office has a booth at OSU's Ag Day that takes place at the fairground. Middle schoolers from Wadsworth will be learning about potential ag careers, and we will be discussing soil health at our booth. We're in the middle of our s supervisor nominating season. If you're 18 years old, reside in Medina County, and have a passion for conservation, please consider running for, more, for our board. A board member uh, serves a three-year term and guides our office in conservation needs of the county. I can be contacted directly for any questions regarding the elections. Our July board meeting will take place on the 17th at 1.30 at our office. It is open to the public, and always feel free to reach out to our office for any uh, 
conversations, questions, or presentations, anything conservation-based. Eric, do you just have one board seat open this year? We will have two. We have one board member running for re-election and then uh, another who has decided to retire. He's been on our board for coming up 33 years. Oh, Who's that? Steve Fulton. Steve Fulton. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. So he, he choose to feel, Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not kidding. Great. All right. All right. Any questions? Good. Thanks, Eric. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Next, open to public comment. Nothing. All right. Very good. We'll move forward. Discussion session. Uh, Chris, what do you have? Just two things, if I might. Sure. Uh, the first is the paving project uh, at Adam Building here. We uh, opened bids, or the county engineer on our behalf opened the bids um, last week. Bid results. Um, I think Matt had sent you a summary mm -hmm. and the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, share again uh, the spreadsheet with you. Um, in summary, there were uh, three bid um, packages. One was uh, bid package number one, which was the lot that uh, uh, exits off of uh, Liberty Street. Mm -hmm. Um, the bid, low bid, came in um, at 202-603.25. The estimate uh, was 240-535. We had budgeted 250000 for paving this year in the capital improvement fund. So that's certainly within that, um, that range of, of fund availability. Uh, there was also a proposal two, which was the a concrete and asphalt mix uh, of the remaining portion of the lot, the larger portion. Uh, the estimate was 372 137.50 for that. The low bid came in at 332 241.25. And then the all concrete um, proposal 2A um, for the larger section was estimated to come in at 658.100. And the low bid was received at 490.163.75. Um, so if we were to proceed um, with just awarding the bid for um, proposal number one, um, we would award it 202-603-25. Um, it would be concrete paving for, again, just limited to the mm -hmm. section that mm -hmm. exits off of uh, Liberty Street. Um, if we were to proceed somehow uh, with proposal one and two, uh, the total of that would be 534,844.50. And if we were to proceed with 1 and 2A, the total required would be 697,781.25. So we um, are going to have to make a decision as to an award for this bid. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that, um, again, we had budgeted 250. The estimated we had budgeted 750 for the restroom renovation project. The current estimate is a little below 600 for that. Mm -hmm. So there is that additional 150 there mm -hmm. for a total availability of approximately 400,000. Um, if we were to go with one and two, um, we would have to come up with another 135,000 approximately. Mm -hmm. um, can we identify? available funds for that purpose, I believe we can. Uh, it would be an additional transfer out of the general fund into the capital improvement fund. Um, for the first six months of this year in the general fund, our revenue is um, running s approximately $500,000 ahead mm -hmm. of where we mm -hmm. thought it would be mm -hmm. at this time. Um, and um, so I, I would be comfortable recommending an additional uh, transfer into capital improvements if mm -hmm. you wish to proceed with that. Um, the other one may be a little more pricey and difficult to fund, but I believe we can still probably identify available funds for that also. But that would involve all concrete. That would involve all concrete, All concrete, yes. which obviously has longer durability, Correct. longer life than, Correct. The, uh, Correct. than the asphalt. Yeah. Right. So I guess that's the trade-off, certainly. Yes. Uh, now, well, and what is we talked about this when we first were putting the the um, RP together, the, the expected timeline for the life expectancy for the asphalt 
I don't have that in front of me. I'm, okay. I apologize, but I can get that to you certainly. And you don't have to make a decision today. Right. Um, obviously, I'd have to present a resolution at the next meeting. Right. Um, so we're scheduled next week not to meet on Tuesday, but on Thursday. Uh, Thursday. So Thursday, I presume would that would uh, be sufficient time to take would, action? You think? I think at this point, I think the county engineer is looking for us to at least verbally notify, Got it. Um, okay. so that they can get it scheduled, mm -hmm. um, so that we can get this done by the end of fall. I guess my my preference would be um, to move forward with the the full project, and I'd lean toward the concrete one, but I also recognize the savings if we if we do the asphalt. So if we can if if we can somehow quantify that the we're not going to spend more on that asphalt in the time that it would take us to re replace the pavement. Then I'd go with that and do the do the full thing for the um, part part concrete part, part asphalt and save a couple dollars. But if if that's not going to be the case, I'd say we eat the frog now and put the concrete in. So eat the frog now. Okay. Yeah. I'm just when you eat a frog, you just got to okay. eat the whole frog. You just <laughs> yeah. got to eat it. Okay. So not usually on my menu. We, that's, we, okay. th <laughs> that's why I eat it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nobody enjoys it. See, I, I, I tend to grab. I, I tend to see if we can afford the option with the concrete. Uh, we are making some major changes to that parking lot. E either way, we're yeah. we're moving those islands. We're also putting the change in the entranceway, putting making sure that uh, people, uh, in terms of the uh, the disabled, we have the uh, that parking, Correct. and then also the uh, routing for the um, uh, treasurer's drop box. Correct rerouted rather than here so yeah. I know we've got a lot of changes my preference is uh, whether you call it a whole frog or not I just at this point I gravitate towards if we can find a way to uh, afford to be able to do the concrete I'd rather do that now yeah and then have that set for for hopefully uh, decades with other okay uh, without other major I'll uh, endeavor to try to get uh, some additional info yeah, regarding okay. maintenance and life of the um, of the project okay All right. um, to you before the end of the day or early tomorrow morning okay right. um, and then if you could take a look at that we'll do uh, get back to me um, sure and uh, All right. then we can get a resolution prepared for next week for next week yep um, okay. based on your your decision um, All right. informal decision at that point but got it okay All right. thank Excellent. you Thanks and then the second and final um, item as you know we had sent out um, uh, vehicle use spreadsheets to all mm -hmm. the departments sure. and uh, offices that uh, had vehicles either leased or owned by the county board of county commissioners so we were asking for them to identify the uh, purpose of the vehicle mm -hmm. uh, within their departmental fleet uh, the frequency of use of the vehicles uh, the odometer reading and the condition of the vehicle so we had uh, provided two deadlines depending on the size of the fleet so smaller mm -hmm. ones we um, two Fridays ago was the deadline for submission of that and then last I believe last Friday was a submission for the larger fleet okay. uh, information we have received all but three of those back so I was hoping to get this in front of you um, by today we're still waiting for the auditor to submit um, the sheriff and drug task force um, I know that uh, Matt has been in contact with all three of those and uh, okay. he's been told they've been working on them um, so that's an update and hopefully by the end of this week we can get mm -hmm. something to you for your uh, review okay great very good thank okay. you that's all I had this morning thank all you right. very much very good. Well, thank you all right and thanks for your work on the um, uh, the other the two bid items for the sheriff I know those were kind of late ads to the agenda but glad we got them in yeah thank you yep super all right anything yeah uh, if you'll indulge me this sure. morning absolutely uh, there was, uh, <laughs> over the weekend there was um and we received some emails about it as well uh an article in the plain dealer related to a um and more conceptual at this point just kind of a i think they called it a thought experiment uh related to a possible sales tax regional sales tax proposal to fund uh, sports stadiums and also uh, improvements to the airports in both Cleveland and, and Akron. I, I'll leave it to folks. I'm sure some people have, have reviewed it. Some people maybe haven't. But um, just we were reached. Uh, there was an inquiry if we had any comments or thoughts on that. And I directed the um, person from the from Cleveland.com that reached out to 
tune into our meeting today because I thought we might be discussing it. So mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to offer my perspectives on it. First, the, the premise to me was a bit faulty. I, I don't know that the notion that public funds are inherently necessary for public arenas and stadiums is, is one that I agree with. Um, I, I, I also tend to reject the sentiment that if we were capable of pulling that kind of regional collaboration together and it were actually possible, that the most appropriate use of those funds would be building sports stadiums for owners that generally have billions of dollars uh, of their own. Um, Ten years ago, Cleveland actually committed public funds to improvements at the Brown Stadium. And the end result, as I could tell, is that a person who goes to the games was uh, scoreboards that were shaped like the state of Tennessee. And the on the field product didn't exactly improve either. So um, that wasn't a great ROI from, from my vantage point. But even as just kind of a thought experiment, the structural flaws are, are pretty obvious to see. It's easy for Cleveland or Cuyahoga County to look to Medina or Geauga or Portage County in the surrounding counties and identify us as merely beneficiaries of the athletic, cultural, recreation, and culinary offerings that the region has. Um, certainly we have people in Medina County who make their homes here uh, specifically to take advantage of those things, and I, and I, I don't deny that. But it also overlooks that um, many, of those, many of those people are also active contributors uh, to keep those organizations here. We have season ticket holders. We have some of the larger, in fact, maybe even largest uh, institutional donors. You see names of, you know, the Westfield Group or RPM or, you know, these these various organizations um, all all over these these organizations and institutions. So I would argue that um, the outlying counties are already doing their share to provide an environment in which these organizations can thrive, even if we aren't footing the bill for the cost of the stadium or the venues in which they perform. And as I read the article, I I, I really as you probably can tell by now, <laughs> bristled at the notion that our citizens are just passive consumers of those benefits. I, I just don't see that being the case at all. Um, it, it also tends to overlook the ancillary benefits that come from having 70,000 people at a football game or 30,000 people at a basketball game, or in the case of the Guardians, a few hundred people at a baseball game. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was a cheap shot. <laughs> but... Uh, I, I, do, I didn't see anything, and I know, again, it's just a thought experience, experiment at this point, but uh, I don't presume there'd be any offsetting contribution of those dollars coming back to our county either, you know, bed tax dollars or other um, perks that come with having the influx of, of people that, that come into the region for something like that. So um, don't want to hold it too, too much to task because it was just kind of a, 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 an overview, but um, I didn't see that in the proposal, and I don't expect we'd be, we'd be um, the beneficiaries of that um, in the case where we'd share the benefits that are more localized to those areas uh, where those billions of regional dollars would be invested. So that, that's another uh, cause for concern. Finally, I realize this all sounds like a lot of what's in it for meism, and that was um, kind of identified as the past versions of these plans have, have been derailed by that. But when the idea of creating what would presumably be a permanent tax increase um, that would generate a new regional bureaucracy is being floated, I think those are the exact kinds of questions that local elected leaders have an obligation to ask on behalf of our taxpayers. And for true regional collaboration to flourish in the way that would be necessary for a plan like this to be viable, the collective benefits need to flow to the entire region, and those benefits must go beyond shiny new stadiums and airport, airports and a renewed civic pride. Simply put, it's fair for the Medina, Giaga, Portage, Ashtabula interests to ask some of these tough questions since not one of our communities has an arena, a stadium, or an airport that would be subsidized by this plan. Too often, our counties are brought into these regional conversations for our ability to provide one thing, and that's money. Plain Dealer's proposal, while a fun thought exercise, would keep Medina County in a very familiar role as a net contributor with very little direct benefit to show for its involvement. And I've sat through enough NOACA board meetings where the federal funding pie is all but divvied up before projects in Medina or Geauga or even the rural portions of Lake County are considered to support a plan that subjugates Medina County to a more broad regional government entity, particularly one that has taxing authority, where our financial contributions would far outweigh even the indirect benefits that we may eventually reap. 
I, uh, I should also say that I really did want to like the idea, <laughs> but at the end of the day, is uh, even somebody who loves the Browns and is open to outside the box problem solving, it uh, it couldn't prevent me from being offended by this at an almost primal level. So I thought I'd share that with you because it was <laughs> as I read through it, it bothered me at, at various uh, various ways. So uh, those are my thoughts on it. I don't know if you have anything to add, but uh, that's that's really kind of how I how I come down on it from a, a preliminary. Perspective, at least. I, I, I would agree. There was a reporter actually uh, appearing to ask for our opinions, yeah. which was kind of interesting. And which we, I was too happy to they, provide. Uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously, and I, I certainly concur with your sentiment and uh, your, your approach to it. Um, obviously, uh, well, in Medina County, when we've had the opportunity that, that to, uh, when we've looked to increase uh, sales tax, we've always asked the voters. So we've asked the voters of the county. Where our county, uh, when we were, the last time we raised a sales tax, where we had the authority to go to the voters, it went to education. We invested in our kids. We invested in our future. Uh, at the same time, Cuyahoga County and Cleveland were raising their sales tax to basically, uh, I'll just say, subsidize uh, making wealthier people, millionaires, even richer. Uh, for the purpose of, of sports, and, uh, and it, it's not an economic benefit that's distributed throughout the region. Everybody in our, I think, believe, our, I, I think we're proud that, that uh, when we look to the use of public dollars, uh, there is a common benefit. I don't think there would be a common benefit right. up there. It literally would benefit a select few. And every consumer in Medina County that would have to pay that additional quarter percent uh, ends up you know, I'm not sure that they would get a similar benefit from any of that. Uh, even in the in the long term, um, I don't believe it would be it, it would be justified. Uh, I fear the approach of forming a, a, a regional governance structure. We would oversee that. It would take a significant change in state law. There is no provision that would allow that kind of county organization right. funding various things such as stadiums airports i think we were asked about an airport they were minor league stadiums uh, they were talking about so they were trying to just spread it spread around like peanut butter mm -hmm. uh just everybody benefits so they're well uh obviously i think uh, we we've spoken in the past our voters have spoken and i truly believe that uh this is this is just a a, a pie in the sky um it's an inter as you say it's an interesting experiment to think about it uh but i can think of better uses for public dollars Correct. frankly and better needs uh, uh, than um, th what they're actually espousing. And our people already are, in a substantive way, contributing to those enterprises, whether they be over, over, to, uh, over to Akron, to their, uh, their stadium over right. there, or go up to Cleveland, uh, the cultural, when you go look at all that, we already are, are contributing yep. uh, financially for those that can afford. Uh, and frankly, that's the way it ought to be. And I don't think we ought to be taxing everybody that doesn't get that benefit. So, but that I, I concur with that statement. And I, I was, me. yeah, no, no, that's that's all right. <laughs> I, I wanted to respond, but I just like no, it's it, I, I'm not sure that I, other than saying no. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm, she wants to print that. That's fine. Well, <laughs> it it and it has been. I mean, the the, the there was a reference in the inquiry that I think yeah. we both got um, re related to when the Browns moved. You know that there was some concept of this that was floated back at that time. I don't know, Stan, you may be familiar with that or not, but um, it seemed then it, it was one of those that was, it was just a very preliminary discussion and, and mm -hmm. it never really got into the substantive stages. Mm -hmm. And these are probably all the reasons why it would have a hard time getting there because it, it, it you know, the, 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 the willingness for community A to contribute tax dollars needs to go along with the, com the, the willingness of community B to contribute benefits to, mm -hmm, to the group mm -hmm, too, and mm -hmm. if if that's not a two way street, it's just a really hard hard thing to think about getting off the well, ground. Well, unfortunately, those those of power in the past when we had, I'll just say, more accessible and regional facilities like uh, the Coliseum in Richfield, uh, had some benefit. I grew up, I mean, in the seventies and eighties and nineties when it was in existence, great facility, and then they uh, they were able to acquire state subsidies to right. bring it back to Cleveland. 
uh, after all that major investment. And now, of course, the land's vacant and so forth. Well, you can see all the roadway improvements that were made there. They basically have maintained, but they don't have that kind of traffic like they did back then. So I remember actually uh, one of my graduation ceremonies at the University of Akron, I think it was for my master's, uh, was there at the Coliseum. Yeah. So, uh, and it's a shame because they used to, that they have the political, uh, if you will, ability to, um, I'll say, have those in, in Columbus. Um, kind of direct a lot of state dollars there well a lot of incentives and we don't have those that kind of uh, influence specific to the football stadium too right yeah, there's exactly there's state right. money now that's yeah. going to be going for the the land bridge to the stadium potentially right yes and yes. the okay. future of that stadium is very much in doubt even Agreed. with with or without this current conversation so yeah. it's it is an interesting regional question mm -hmm. uh i'm certainly willing to to sit down and take meetings and, and be mm -hmm. part of a solution but it, mm -hmm. it, these are all the things these are all the questions i'm going to ask whether i'm in that room or i'm in this room or any other room in between i think it so. speaks to us what's a important to us right in medina county what's important to us is our children our education our institutions here correct great <clears throat> thank you all right but thank you all right there goes our chances of of wrapping up a quick meeting in colleen's absence yeah so i know i know and, the and they're probably unlikely to ever want to move a stadium here either so. <laughs> uh and uh, okay uh do anything else that's all I have. Okay, I, I'd, I'd like to mention, you might notice I'm, I'm wearing, it's, it's, it's the America 250 Ohio pin. It's the Ohio Semi-Quincentennial Committee, uh, Commission. Uh, I happen to be a, a voting member on that. But the Medina County Historical Society recently received a grant uh, for publishing and compiling and publishing a history of uh, Revolutionary War veterans that have settled here as well as their family history. And I'm asking publicly, if anybody knows, have, have done a, their own uh, family histories and knows, uh, uh, or uh, information that can be uh, assembled as part of this, please uh, contact either our office or the Medina County Historical Societies. Uh, the idea is to publish this uh, next year. There are some local historians that will be putting together some of those stories about uh, those uh, individuals that served in the Revolutionary War and then came settled here either by virtue of, uh, of, of getting entitled to land or the pensions that they brought here, they brought their families, settled here, and we've got some great great family histories that have uh, heretofore not been related. And I think uh, to celebrate uh, America's uh, 250th birthday uh, in, in two years, uh, that would be a nice, nice to have a, that lat local history. So the grant they received uh, is for publishing that is, and putting that, make sure that Every county, li every library, uh, as well every every school library, and, and disseminate uh, that kind of uh, the, the historical story of these families that uh, settled here and what they contributed to our great county. That's so, great. All right, great and if program. You, all right, uh, I've got nothing else to add. I will move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, second, roll call, please. Harrison. Yes. Hambly. Yes. Everybody have a a good week. We'll see you next week. And our next week is on Thursday, not Tuesday. <laughs>